The more time that goes on in Genshin, the more convinced I am that Hoyoverse hates this weapon type. By every conceivable metric, Claymore is by far the most neglected, least interesting, and lowest power level weapon in the game, with almost no exception. But why? Let's talk about the five things that make Claymore so bad, and how, if ever, Hoyoverse will choose to redeem this Celestia Forsaken weapon type. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for build. First, I want to go through briefly each one and their general power level. I think the one that stands above the rest, in my opinion, as not being bad is Beta, right? Obviously, the Ito is also not bad, and Eula is bad or not, depending on who you talk to. But I think a pretty decent amount of people would agree that she's pretty bad. And Ito is by no means a top tier DPS. Only Beto is really considered a good, a, ver a good to very good character. And even then, she is very restrictive. She only works properly against against enemies where there's actually just two enemies, which those situations definitely exist. And she's definitely really amazing in those situations. And she's pretty good at AOE in general. And I could totally agree if you wanted to put her in A tier, that would totally be fine with me. I can definitely see it. Ito, although he does have good damage numbers, he's an on, you know, he's an on-field DPS. Eula is an on-field DPS. Beto is an off-field DPS, which is key. Remember that. And he has good numbers, but he needs a lot of things going for him to really make his teams shine. You pretty much need the whole Geo squad. You need Gore. Zhang Li, Albedo to really help him pop off. And ideally, you even have high constellations of Goro and his signature weapon. So to say that Ito is just like a really good character, I don't think is totally fair. He's kind of a product of all these different pieces together. And Eula really just has been left in the dust by, by Hoyoverse. They do not, they cannot throw her a bone. Even her signature support Mika couldn't actually save her and put a pin in that too. Looking at the other Claymore characters, you'll notice that, well, pretty much everyone always rags on these characters constantly. These are not ordered by the way. I didn't order um, these characters. Razor got really lucky and he got promoted by Dendro to by, to being an actually pretty powerful unit if you put him in those teams. But I can't help but wonder, would he be more powerful if he was a different weapon type? Let's say Razor was a polearm. He would attack so much faster and he would actually be probably a much better unit in those team in those Burgeon teams. And it's not like you can call a lot of these characters bad strictly because they're a Claymore, but they do all happen to be kind of underwhelming, don't they? Luke's damage just has fallen off compared to, you know, what other damage can do, what other characters can do now. Even in the beginning, he was not as good as Shang Ling. Sayu is probably one of the worst, if not the worst, animal character in terms of power. Chong Yun, probably the worst Krau character, except for maybe Fremine, who's the new contender for the worst Krau character. Noelle can be decent, but similar to Ido, she really needs a lot going for her to actually make things work. Dia, obviously people constantly hate on her, and while I do think she is a little bit overhated, she's still pretty bad. Kave is definitely the worst Dendro unit, and Jin Yan, almost definitely the worst Pyro unit, and Dory, probably the worst Electro unit. So when we really take an objective look at these characters, and again, if you love these characters, you know, it's not that they can't work. It's just that versus a lot of the other characters in the game, these guys end up coming out close to the bottom. So why? Why are Claymore so bad? Number one, I think the biggest reason is that the vast majority of Claymore characters are on-fielders. On-fielders have a really tough go at Genshin Impact because there's a ton of competition. In a game where off-field DPS do as much as on-field DPS, characters like Beto really shine because because they can be used off field. But if we look through the characters, off field DPS, on field, on field, on field, on field, on field, on field, off field, off field, on field when she's in her burst, on field, usually on field and off field. So you can see that there's actually a pretty large majority of the characters that are claimers that are on field characters. And I think that I think that there's a reason for this. If you're going to make character an off field support, you're not going to give them this big gigantic sword. The character with the big gigantic sword is going to be on field, smashing and bashing and hashing things. Hashing hacking. You know, you want Dilu to be swinging that giant fire sword. You don't want to be to doing some supportive off-field thing. So I think that's one of the main reasons why a lot of Claymore characters are on-field because it just makes more sense. If you're going to have a character with this big sword, you're going to have them be on-field. And why is on-field inherently bad? Well, characters that don't have an off-field presence, again, it's a very contentious space. Only one character can be on-field at a time. You're only ever going to have one on-field carry. And so it's really easy to fall off and not be one of the on-field carries and not be a good on on field carry because you're behind the other options. It's no secret that supports in Genshin Impact and off field DPSs are the kings, right? The best characters in the game, Yelan, Kazuha, Nahida, Nilu, none of them are on field characters. If, if you're an off field character, you have so much more 
meant to be broken because you can do the majority of the things that you need to do while being off field, letting someone else run the show. You can have three off fielders, but you can only have one on fielder. And even then you can actually have four off fielders on a team and play like kind of a quick swap. So that's the first reason. But the second one is that as an on fielder, Claymore characters have a unique disadvantage. And this disadvantage is that when they attack, obviously they have these big chunky animations that make sense with their Claymore type and Claymore swagger, right? His animations take really long time. If you compare that to a sword, for example, these swipes come out much faster and Diluc very, very low. But not only are they slow, they also have something called hit lag, which means when they hit the enemy, they actually slow down even more. And not only that, they slow down at a faster rate or at a slower rate when compared to other characters. So the amount of hit lag that Dilu gets out is much less than the hit lag that Ayaka gets. So that slows down the Claymore's attacking speed to be even more noticeable than it was before. And so he's after me. So I have no real way to fully prove this, <clears throat> but part of me thinks that when Genshin designed the Claymore type, they designed a baseline multipliers for the type and maybe didn't factor in how much hit lag these character really gets, how slow their animations really are, and how much DPS they actually lose from this hit lag. From Because the more laggy hits you have, the longer it takes you to swing that big sword, the less hits that you can do in combat, and the less DPS that you'll have. I don't. It doesn't truly make sense to me that Diluc would be so much much worse than Shang Ling at launch. I think that maybe they undertuned characters like Diluc and even by the time Eula came around, her stack building mechanics, imagine if she didn't have so much hit lag, she could build more stacks with her combo and get way more damage out of her kit and she wouldn't be such an underwhelming character. It almost feels to me like maybe something about the Claymore weapon type because whether it, whether you're looking, when you look at all the early Claymore characters, whether it's Eula, whether it's Noel, whether it's Razor, they all could use a big jump up in terms of their raw multipliers to compensate for how slow and laggy their hits are. It's kind of a crackpot theory, but that, that's what I really think. The third issue I see is that a lot of them are experimental, but undertuned. So if you look at Beidou, she was a launch four star. So for some reason, those were all experimental, but overtuned. But Eula, the first really dedicated, limited physical carry. Obviously, Razor was the first physical carry, but they went for also something really interesting with this, with this backloaded big nuke damage. So it was very experimental, very cool. But it seems like, again, whether it was undertuned because they didn't account for hit lag that she couldn't build as many stacks i have no idea obviously they must have tested the character but for whatever reason it was a cool concept but just the damage isn't quite there they even it seems like they even tried to fix this with mika making her increase her attack speed which is nice but it but increasing attack speed does not decrease hit lag and claymores have a lot of hit lag. a lot of that swinging time is not just the speed of the swinging it's the hit lag from hitting the enemy and and, and that interrupts your speed swing and mika does nothing to fulfill that role now if he also reduced hit lag in addition to stop increasing attack speed, then he actually might have been a really interesting and very, very cool and fun buffer. Kave was another character, really interesting kit, really unique experimental kit, but undertuned. Chong Yun fits that example. Even Jin Yan fits that example. Dia fits that example too. Dory, I have no idea what they were cooking. And Fremine, also a really experimental and really undertuned kit, unless he gets some crazy changes before release. So I don't know. There just seems like some sort of pattern to me. And again, maybe this is crackpot. So maybe you'll like number four better. Number four, is a lot of people don't really enjoy the Claymore playstyle because it is so slow. It takes a lot of time to hit and hit and there's just, you know, and not, not a ton of dopamine going through your brain when the hits are coming out this slowly. And I've come to enjoy it a little more, but for me personally, I would prefer to play almost any other attacking type. They just feel pretty clunky to play, especially you get locked in these animations for a long time and you just doesn't feel quite as satisfying as it should. And so what they've done with a lot of the more recent characters, even in starting with Ito and then even more with Dia, is that they've introduced some other burst infusion mechanic to make it feel like you're not playing so much of a Claymore character. So when Dia or Ito infuse their burst, they feel a lot smoother to play. And I, I don't think that's on accident. So part of me feels like Hoyoverse knows people, a, 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 a lot of people don't really enjoy the Claymore playstyle. And I know a lot of people do as well. But since a lot of people don't, maybe Maybe they're not making as many characters this type because they know people don't enjoy them as much. And maybe it's part of why they make some of them undertuned as well. It's just a theory, but I think it could be true. Or maybe it's reason number five. It's that Hoyoverse just doesn't like Claymore characters themselves. They just hate this weapon type. Why do I say that? Well, they're actually the weapon type that has the least amount of characters. They're not that far behind Polearm and Catalyst, especially when Fremenet comes out. But consider this. Polearm has one, two, three, four, five, six limited five stars. Catalyst has 
one, two, three, four, five, six limited five stars. What the heck? Let's do sword two. One, two, three, four, five, six limited five stars. Bo has one, two, three, four, five, six limited five stars. You're sensing a pattern. Claymore has, well, they've got one, two, huh? It, 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 well, well, they've got D. No, nope. she's a standard. Uh, well, we'll be And the last one was released in Inazuma. Um, it's official. Hoyoverse hates this weapon type. Whether it was one of those reasons or you think it was a different one, please comment down there in the comments. While you're there, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. We've gone full time. We're supporting the family with this. As you know, ad revenue is notoriously inconsistent. So thank you so much to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. If you want to check that out and support the channel, please go ahead. If you want to join your Discord and get great help and great community from a great Genshin community, check out the link in the description. And if you don't want to do any of those things, that is totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.